My order I placed 15 days ago with Redline Goods just showed up. Uh, it's a new shift boot for my TC because the vinyl one that comes with the car already has some holes in it from wear and tear and a matching leather boot for the e-brake as well. So I didn't want to do anything super fancy with the car because this is just a direct replacement for a worn out piece. So I just stuck with plain black leather with red stitching. First off, the quality of the leather looks really nice and it feels good. Um, and also the stitching looks spot on. So you can see here on the e-brake boot and then of course the stitching here, here, and inside, and then the shift boot. Now, you can do something fancier if you want for your car. Um, I just, like I said, I wanted something that was a little bit plain. It's just m not my style to go too crazy with this. But if you go on their site, you can see that they have various colors available um, for regular leathers, perforated leathers, Napa leather. They even have a carbon fiber down here. And then they have all these different thread colors that you can choose from. So you can do stuff like contrasting thread colors. You can do quadruple thread. As you saw in the other picture there, you can do um, two-tone on the shift boot. You can do a single stripe. This is actually kind of nice. I, I debated on doing something like this, but I just stuck with what I got. Uh, you can do racing stripes. And then you can do piping, which is right here. All right, so also on their site are instructions on how to install this on the TC. I'm going to be following that to put this in the car. So let's go ahead out to the vehicle and uh, take off the old boots and put the new ones on. The first thing we're going to do is pop this trim off of here. You can just grab it from down here, lift it up, and then from here, just kind of push it out, and then it'll come right out. Next is to remove this trim right here. You can just grab it from the side of the cup holder here and lift it straight up and then do the same thing on this side until it pops up and out and then you can lift it up and then pry it away so I can't actually physically remove mine at the moment because I have some wires that go into here um, that actually connect up into into those uh, but normally you wouldn't have to worry about that and you can just lift this out of the way but I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my cup holder light so I can pop this out. If you give it a good tug, the e-brake boot will just pop right off the top of the handle. Pull these three tabs up to free the e-brake boot and pull it out. Um, immediately what I notice is there's a wire that runs in here and that's what helps it clip into place. But the new boot does not have anything like that. Um, also, this part is a little vague on the instructions as to how the new e-brake boot goes in, so I guess we'll figure this out right now. On the old boot, go ahead and take an X-Acto blade and cut the stitches out of here to remove the piece of metal. And then set it inside the new boot just above the stitch line here, so that way you can press it into the grooves here and then behind these tabs, and this will hold this in place. Press the trim back into place. These tabs that are here may be pushed out a little bit because this boot is a lot thicker than the original one. So make sure that they actually go uh, behind the bottom trim here. And then just pull this down until it slips over the bottom here and it'll stay in place. There we go. And make sure that... Perfect. All right, let's do the shift boot. I've already cleared everything out of here because we'll have to lift this trim out in a second, but go ahead first and unscrew your shift knob. All right, and push this little plastic piece off of here. Um, I can't do this with one hand, unfortunately, but basically just pry it apart and push it off. There's a spring underneath of here, so just be weary of that. Right, so now take the spring, put it somewhere safe, and then go ahead and grab the trim from the side here and lift it up. And it'll pop up off of the side as well. And then you'll have to reach underneath and unplug these two harnesses right here. Once the harnesses are disconnected, just go ahead and just lift this straight up. And there you, you can already see the holes that I'm talking about on mine. Uh, but there you go. When you're looking at it from underneath, you'll see these two large tabs. Just 
push the tabs away from the boot and then it'll pop right out. So here you go. Now we just have to separate the uh, boot from the reverse lockout ring. If you flip the boot upwards like this and then just pull, it will easily come off of the reverse lockout ring just like this. We have to transfer the plastic ring from the old boot to the new one. So use a pair of needle nose pliers to straighten out all the staples and pull them out. And then you can either use glue or a stapler to reattach the ring to the new boot. Place the ring in front of you so that the flat side is facing down and then you've got this tab facing you. And then take the new boot, flip it inside out and then drop it down through the middle here. Make sure that this small tab is facing this tab as well. That way, like these little cutouts will match up here and here. Then the trick is to just fold it down to the very edge of the ring and then start stapling or gluing it into place. My stapler did not really work very well, so I went with the gluing method. So it looks pretty good right here. This is the only side that's not going to be really glued down. It wasn't stapled before either, but that, that's going to be fine. So if you're going to be doing the gluing method, make sure that you use actual glue for leather. Uh, this is uh, a water-based contact adhesive that I picked up from Tandy Leather. Slide the shift boot over top of the reverse lockout ring. It's going to be a tight fit. But once you get it over the top part here, you can then just put your fingers around the sides of the lockout ring and then pull the boot down over top. And it's going to be a lot tighter than the OEM boot, so you'll find that it won't spin around as much. Pop the shift boot and ring back into place. You'll start by setting this middle tab in place first and then clip it down on the two sides. Before we reinstall it, push the reverse lockout ring down so that you can uh, see the bottom like this, and then rotate it so that it's angled like this. Then we're gonna go ahead and slide it over top of the shifter, kind of push it down until it pops out the top. Ugh. All right, there we go. Now grab your spring, stick it back on top, and then grab the retainer clip, and then press it into place. Reconnect the two harnesses, and then just line everything up on here and press it down into place. Screw your shift knob back on. And then just make sure everything looks good. So now fitment looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of tuck it down a little bit like that. That looks very nice. All that's left is to replace this last piece of trim. You'll see it's got a little tab there, and there's a hole right there. It's gonna go into that hole right there like that. And then you're gonna just line up the bottom edges here all the way to the back. And then just press it down into place until it clips, and you're done. Here's one final look of everything installed. I'm very happy with how it turned out. It looks great. Um, the fitment for the shift boot was perfect. Uh, granted, the e-brake boot fitment was perfect also, except that they didn't really give me instructions on how to attach it at the bottom. But fortunately, you now have this video to show you that you can just do that by cutting out the wire from the old boot and placing it in here instead. All right, well, I hope this helps you out if you're thinking about getting some custom boots. Um, I'll go ahead and put a link to uh, Redline Goods at the bottom of the video description. Um, thanks for watching.